good. Hello, um, so this is the Kazuko Project. I'm just going to introduce everyone. Um, so, Sarah. Hi, um, I'm Sarah. I did a lot on the coding and the initial paperwork side is where most of my role was. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm the team lead for coding, but I've also done a bit of concept work and modeling. Hi, I'm Ben Langford. I have been doing 3D modeling and I've also been involved with creating the mood boards for environmental design. Hi, I'm Emily Inet and I've been the team lead for the 3D modeling, so I've been doing a lot of the uh, 3D modeling. <coughs> Hi, I'm Cameron Powell. I am the concept artist for the project, particularly the environmental concept artist. I am Ben Jones and I'm part of the 3D team and I've been doing 3D models. Yeah. Hi, I'm Adam. I've, again, I'm also part of the 3D modelling team, but also I've been doing a lot of the initial paperwork for this. I'm Jaden. I did, um, was it map design, level design for the actual map, game map. Okay. And I'm Chloe, and I've been doing uh, the world building team uh, based on like environmental art. So, um, yeah, so basically this project is based in Kazuko, it's an educational based game. Uh, you're required to basically walk around, find different species of frogs, um, and then it gives you a bit more information. Um, so basically, I'm going to start with the mind map. So this is every this is um, a collaboration mind map between the team, um, and then it gives basically all the information included for the project. Um, for example, uh, assets, culture, sound, environment, market, market analysis, and um, <coughs> mechanics. And this is the team Gantt chart. So it's basically all the tasks included for the project. Uh, I created a, a weekly. Um, weekly basis one um, but yeah so obviously it's showing the progression through the project and what needs to be done by certain times to stay um, focused on it on each um, like mini deadline let's say right okay so who's this oh this would be me Uh, these are the mood boards for the environments. Uh, using the client, uh, using the information provided by the client, um, using information, uh, using images to create mood boards to get the essentials for the rainforest, like get the main feel and the main look of the environment such as uh, places of interest, uh, the main campsites, uh, like rocks and waterfalls and, you know, yeah. And that's the second half of it. <laughs> so basically, during the beginning of the project, I introduced myself to a number, uh, a few things. So the first one was uh, introduction to like textures and how to create texturing, and uh, painting on a landscape, um, and foliage painting. Basically, um, so they were the main focus points. Um, so this one was procedural foliage um, and painting foliage on a, a landscape. Um, yeah. Um, so I was 
um, introduction. Oh, sorry. Um, this is where I have introduced myself to water bodies, um, inserting <coughs> lakes and rivers, waterfalls, and water and coal stacks, as well as using like the painting of foliage around that. Um, this one is basically based on how to paint a landscape material. So when you actually build the landscape, it, it just it creates the material as you're in the landscape mode. Um, nanites as well. I've introduced myself to that. Obviously, it's all about like realism. So. Um, I've done that and the Treat software, creating my own uh, foliage and then you can import them into the actual project. Uh, this one basically is, so I created the landscape for the Zuko project, um, basing it off the map and then I imported the textures um, used obviously my previous research knowledge, put the, the main river in and just painted a few foliage basically and, and test played. Um, so yeah that's where I've got up to so far, of course there's future improvements to be made. Okay so I've been working on uh, a few of the 3D models, so I've been going for the more complex models, but I started off relatively simple to kind of build it up. Um, I first started off making a insect repellent, but I don't have the screenshot on it, but it is quite simple. Um, but then I went on to the radio in the middle, which I later go back to to apply, to apply a normal map onto it, to, which I feel really improved it. Um, I also did the microscope, which was actually quite a complex model, um, but I did try my best with it. Um, I had to look up a lot of references for that one, just because it's such a unique shape. Um, this is where I went into looking into normal maps. So I made the court board, and I went back to the radio as well. Um, I wanted to do a, although the court board is a very simple shape, I wanted to improve it, so that's why I brought in the normal map, and I really think it gave it a really nice texture. Um, and I also went back to the radio as well to add a normal map onto that. Um, I also looked into cloth a lot, just because it's a little bit more complex modifier on 3D Max to deal with. Um, so I started work, working on that and made a tent cover and shelter. The tent cover will be used later in another as an overall model later on. I also went into doing concept art because I wanted to look into adding background characters for the game. So those are my concept art for well, model sheets for them. And then I started doing the models. So those are still very basic. <coughs> and they obviously need to be improved and worked on, but they are the basic shapes I've gone to so far. Just ahead. <laughs> that one. Number one. There we go. So I went back to my research on um, cloth. This was possibly the hardest model that I did so far, and um, I didn't really enjoy it, but I'm glad with the um, outcome. Uh, it was a really big struggle, but as I said, I'm pleased with the outcome. And then I went back to the cover that I did previously and uh, put the tents underneath them to make the overall model. I imported them into uh, Unreal to test the scale. And then my favourite model so far is the generator. This was um, 
Tetrophy in substance, and I'm glad I did it in substance because I'm actually really pleased with it, pleased with the texturing. And that is all the models. Oh, and then I imported them all into the game just to get them in there. And yeah, I've got all the smaller models together and then the uh, tents together as well. These are a couple of experimental sketches I have cooked up uh, on the top right. Um, this, that was a sketch I did on paper. I decided to not sketch my environments on paper because I thought they were too time consuming and they looked rather disproportionate. So I decided to trade over a couple of photos on Photoshop. Um, I began to use, um, I, used, I heavily used um, the pen tool particularly the shape option, but I also used um, the, the paintbrush tools with different settings to draw the effect in the background. Eventually I decided to draw, to draw, a, to draw an environmental concept of the camp, but I, just, but I didn't use a reference image this time, so I Yeah, these are the concept sketches I've done on the campsite. Uh, this one I did just yesterday, so... And this is one I did of a little size comparison of that little fog over there and a bunch of other camping assets. on paperwork, so I did the HP, I think this might be both, um, but the HP, but this is an old screenshot, it's a bit more up to date now and actually looks better. And then my sections of the GBD, I also worked on those, um, and then my input to the mind map, that's like my own one, and then got helped input to the bigger one. Um, I then worked on a bit of UI concept while I was, I don't know, but I, I, I decided to make these. I had an idea in my head and I wanted to get it on paper, so I did this. Um, for the menu design, I kind of based it on, I looked up the actual site and um, there was this sign at the entrance and I thought having the, the sign at the entrance to the park would be a good idea to have it as like the entrance to the game. So I designed a main menu based on that. And then a couple of just simple UI tooltips and counters for the animals. And then like a day and night, but they, they were done late at night and I could probably do better. <laughs> um, I made two models. The roll map I am happy with. The first aid box I am not happy with. So the first aid box I plan to redo because um, I can do better than that. That's terrible. <laughs> um, and can we go back please? I'm not done, thank you. The roll mat, however, I did a couple of iterations and that was like the, I think the third or fourth time that I'd gone over it and I finally figured out how I wanted to make the sides go in to make it look rolled up and I think it came out really well. Um, then I did code, which is where I put most of my work into. This is a couple of screenshots of the inventory code, but there is a lot more. Um, when it goes into it, I just wanted to get a couple of screenshots in to show some basic bits. Um, and then I have got a video, but it didn't work on here. If you go to, don't close it, but go on the folder. There is a little video that I uploaded in the same folder. Um, no, up, that one. Um, and then this is a little video of my code working. So that's opening the inventory with nothing in it. Um, and then that will be like a frog item eventually. And then you can see that it puts it in the infantry cool. um, and you can drag it around. Um, and then you can also move it to different slots. Um, and for some reason I did that a few times. I mean, it's a bit light. <laughs> um, and then you press tab to open and close your infantry and that's it working. And I think 
Okay, Kelly, we're up to your section now. Okay, this is all being recorded. Okay, so I don't know if you want, you want to add to anything what you've said so far. Oh, you don't see anything. I'm just, I'm just shared it to shared it with you. Can you see anything yet? Projector, possibly. Okay, can you see? Can, can you see the slides here? Look. She won't be able to see it if you've got the chat box in the way. Yeah. That's probably the problem. I should see it now. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, I've got to, you. Okay. You have to move the box. Yeah. No, there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's what you, that's what you did as far as you got last time. Okay. Uh, obviously, you're still working on the code and stuff, aren't you? So, still working on, on the tool tip stuff, you reckon, yeah? So, we finished the UI concepts and they're in the folder. Great, okay. Any, anything else to add, Kelly? So, what, what I would do is once you get the tool tip stuff working, do a screen, uh, do some capture footage of it with OBS or something like that so you can actually see it working. Okay, good. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, who's next? Adam. Yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, so, a lot of this, so, this is some of the stuff I've done so far. Most of it's all sort of the pre production side. So, the first thing I did was create a mood board of all the animal species that were present in the park using all the resources were given. I also did the uh, HP along with uh, Sarah, although I think you've done an updated version now, haven't you? Or updated it in some form? Um. The HP. Well, yeah, it's been on the yeah it's continued to be it's pretty much all. I also did a proposal, proposing the idea to the client of like what we're going to make. I also did a 3D model of that, but I'm going to redo that because it came out quite crap. And I think I've also done a couple more things as well. So I also did my section of the GDD, which which I looked at was looking at the market of our game and looking at like what potential markets use our game for the future and the, la and the other thing over here that I've done so far is a game test sheet so that when we come to test the game in the future I can give these to people so they can fill out when we actually test the game. Ben now. Hello. Okay, um, so far what I've done is um, I've been mostly sick for a couple of um, so I've missed quite a few days, so um, to update, so uh, update before I've done is I've mostly um, been 3D modeling. Uh, I've managed to finish this bench, it looks all quite realistic. Uh, it's made of woods and it's like, you know, made of tree logs. Um, yeah, uh, this is my section on the GDD log. It was like talk about existing like games that have like similar concepts on like documenting animals and like um, using a very similar menu system of um, explaining like different types of animals and like how um, they live in their environments. Um, 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 shit, sorry, um, sorry, I'm a bit nervous. Um, moving on, uh, uh, I did a 3D model, model of this water barrel here. Uh, it's, it, it needs, uh, needs a little bit of work, but I'm um, quite happy with it so far. Yeah. Um, so I've made a coding list for the coding team. Um, I've made a pickup system, so basically you can pick up any animal, maybe some objects. Um, I've made a torch system, which works when you press F, and you can turn it on and off. Um, I've added stuff to the GDB. 
Uh, I've made four creature models and I've also shown the UV maps. Which I'm not too happy with all of them. And also some of the normal maps are not too great. Mm -hmm. um, the frog was an old model made by previous students, but I fixed it. Because um, the original model was quite simple and I needed fixing. And these are some concepts I've made of various frogs and salamanders. So, um, I was given the old map that a uh, previous group made, and they had broken collisions, so I went in to fix all of it. It also made a really, really big map, and used like one tenth of it, so I, was, I, I uh, was it, made it a lot smaller, and then um, they didn't have much in terms of where players can go. So uh, I added in a mountain area. So um, we got different terrain as well. Um, and then I also made a, was it like a Photoshop map just to show everyone what it looks like. Um, and I've shown like positions where animals should or can be. Um, but that's also, uh, that could be changed. Uh, as we haven't finalised where we want to place everything yet, so. Okay, good. Right. Okay. Uh, so, this is my uh, mood board I've done, which is the uh, campsite for the area we're kind of trying to go for. Uh, I've used the pictures that have been given to us by the client as we're trying to get it as kind of accurate as possible to the real location. And then I've got my. Uh, GDD section in the uh, right, uh, which is about like the objectives of both in-game and what we're hoping the products will achieve as a whole on the real world, which is kind of things like, you know, spreading a message about deforestation, the effect it has on animals, and what kind of animals you can find in the uh, Kazuko National Park and what you could, what kind of... Uh, you can do with them, like, are they safe to touch, are they dangerous, kind of things like that. Um, these are the models I've um, created so far for the uh, product. Um, I haven't textured any of them, or if, I, if they do look textured, because I've just added like a quick kind of image just to make it look a little nicer when re rendering. Um, I'll have to go back and change and remodel some of them, as I have used some booleans, which so big no no don't do that and then uh, that that's the uh, model I'm working on at the minute with the axe um, I am hoping to get on with the um, the day night cycle once um, we've got the uh, tooltip uh, coding into the game so I can then st get stuck with mine that's it yeah that's it okay Okay, Chloe. <coughs> um, All right, so uh, so how how are we in uh, telling to go forward in part two? So in part two, obviously, everyone's skills, like everyone's learned, is going to be implemented into the game. Um, it's going to all the mechanics and everything, and then you will be able to actually walk around and pick up and search for the, the animal species uh, visually it'll, it'll just evolve and look you know it needs to look real as possible so um, yeah so plan to get everything in working correctly looking good and hopefully the outcome will be absolutely fantastic <laughs> So with the, with, with the uh, new terrain you did last night, does, is the water working with it now, is it? Yes, yeah, okay. yes, yeah. so that's all working, that just needs um, improving, more like detailed, you know. So, so we need to make sure that the river's in there, make sure, there's loads of reference we've got for that now, so have a really good look at that and try and mimic it as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it, yeah, I've just got the basics. And, and, and make it interesting, so maybe I'm like, uh, maybe three or four trails in yeah. you know, the river. You know, let's look, look at the reference material more than anything else. Yeah, okay, that's right. it. Okay. Um, I think mechanics-wise, we're almost there, aren't we? Mm, uh, yes, I think so. Day, day, and, day and night. Day and night, yeah. yeah. That's me.
Okay, so I think we're still waiting on the tooltip. Yeah, yeah we're we're still I think once Kelly gets that working, I think that's the hard stuff out of the way, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. No, so just, it's all just blocking all that. That's great. That's that's good news. That's mm. really good. So well done, guys. That's excellent. Okay, that's the hardest bit done so far. So getting yeah, that yeah, working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So it's gonna be uh, all hands on deck for 3D next turn, basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, get the looking as really as good possible. And I've, I've asked Steve. Um, he obviously sent me all the. Um, resources in relation to the frogs, snakes, all that sort of stuff. But what I'm trying to do, because you're, you're up to here, I'm going to try and see his, I might go and see him actually. I want his guys to, to do that proper tool tip sort of like card, if you like. All right, is it poisonous? Where do you find it? Because it's going to take just ages to do that and we haven't got time. All right, so I want to make an idiot proof sort of like little guide type, tool tip guide type thing that we can just literally just plonk in. Just tell us what it needs to be. Yeah, for each frog basically. Okay, all right, so, and, and, Again, uh, I think we've got the copyright for that that stuff now, the resource-wise. Okay, so we should be able to just lift off the images of the frog and put them on the inventory stuff. Oh, cool. Okay, all right, yeah. Just as a note for the HP, the only bit that's not done on it, that's not like <laughs> fleshed out, is the names of the animals because you said that you were yeah, going to yeah. get them to choose. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. There'll be, there'll, there'll be ten frogs, so ten I snakes. Put yeah. Five of the frogs in because there was a, li a little mini list on one of the yeah, yeah, works, yeah. and the rest I've just put in numbers yeah. where the names will go. Yeah. Basically, okay, to well, show. we'll sort that next turn. That, that stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, other than that, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the outcome. I think now you've got the mechanics hopefully sorted. That's going to be that's huge. Wasn't there another video that Jaden put up? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Can I see that? Or? Yeah. Already, that's a big improvement on what they did a few years back, guys. That's really good. Um, well done. Is it? It's that one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's 17 minutes ago. So I want to be inside the inventory. I'm very proud of my inventory. <laughs> that's why. You should be. The rerun. It's a the very good. Run. It's a very good inventory. I only show it for like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, Sarah. Get and then I walk into that. a bunch of logs. That's great, right? So the aim, the aim for this one, guys, listen guys, the aim for this, that I really want to bring this to the Royal Cornwall show with the with the Roman one, hopefully. Oh yeah. Okay, and get, it should get quite a bit of press because the uh, uh, it's educational based, okay, I'm sure the college will promote it. Okay, all right, I will if they don't, okay, and I know Steve will, okay, and I'm hoping start, start, starting next September, his students might be using this, mm. okay, and he's intending to make it because it's such a big deal, you know, for saving frogs and snakes and stuff like that, he's going to make it, try and make it a worldwide thing. And that's going to be amazing for you guys, okay, all right, okay, for your CVs, okay, all right. That's what we're aiming for. I want this working so people can actually use it anywhere in the world, basically. All right, and trust me, that gets you a foot in the door at most places, I promise you. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, guys, I'm, I'm really pleased with that so far. Okay, okay. all right, okay, all right. So obviously over, over Christmas, you know, have a bit of a break, but you, you know what part two holds now, you know you're going to be doing that basically. Yeah, yeah. it's okay, going to be right. wrapping up 3D. Yeah, all right, so it's going to be put on, put on the 3D, get it looking as nice as possible basically. Okay, everyone got that? Yeah. Good. Well done guys, that was good.